there it is. We've completed the game. So we've completed the game, right? That's it. Completed the game. It's a chest. World of Warcraft. Hey guys, do you want to play Guild Wars? No, I would actually say no to Guild Wars. What is up guys, Medieval Marty here with another video. I cover a ton of medieval, fantasy and RPG games on this channel, but very rarely do I talk about MMOs. Mostly because I only really play WoW on and off, and no other MMO has really gripped me lately. Until Elder Scrolls Online. So I want to cover in this video, should you play Elder Scrolls Online right now in 2021? I've tried... I've tried playing ESO about four times in the past because I'm a massive Skyrim and Oblivion fan but could never get into ESO for reasons I'm going to cover in this video. But I'm max level now, pretty deep into leveling my champion points, doing end game dailies with friends, dungeons, crafting, all that fun stuff, while still exploring all the other content that I've missed over the last few years. So I wanted to make a video, so I'm not sure what's changed with ESO or what's changed with my outlook, but I know there's people out there like me and my friends who are struggling to find a good MMORPG and never fell in love with ESO when it first came out, or maybe fell out of love with it along the way. So, to tell you if ESO is worth playing, first I'm going to go over what there is to do in the game, and then if these parts of the game are enjoyable or worth your time, and talk about any problems. As I said, the game has massively changed since I last played it, and I'm going to cover that too. Things that bugged me before have now improved, and some are still there, and they'll all be in this video. Uh, some games have like good PvP, but it can be pay to win. Some games have got end game, but it's a grind fest. And ESO isn't perfect in that regard, so I want to go through it all. This video is going to be timestamped, so if there's certain things you want to watch, jump around to those. As always, this is all my opinions of someone who mostly plays theme park MMOs, and I'm comfortable with that system. So, first up, the first thing I want to talk about in the game is the first thing you do in the game, and that's the character creation. This is hands down the biggest issue for me and my friends coming into ESO. I had the issue first, I made my character first, told my friends I was playing, and they had the same issue. And it was a big challenge every time I've tried to play the game. And that is, that is how flexible the class system is. So when you first start the game, you pick between three factions, and you pick a race which is locked to one of those three factions. Same as most games, you know, dwarves have to be alliance, that kind of thing. And then you pick a class, this is the real issue. The class doesn't impact as much as you think, and it really isn't that important. Me and the people I play with mostly come from WoW and are used to the Holy Trinity and rigid class types. You know, if you're a mage, you stand at the back throwing fireballs. If you're a rogue, you sneak around in light or medium armor and you stab things. Priests heal and the big boys with plates stand up front taking damage. But throw all those notions out with ESO. Basically, your class just gives you access to three skill trees. But there's like 20 other skill trees in the game. Your race, your guilds, the weapon and armor you wear, um, and other things in the world that have their own skill tree. I play a Nightblade, so I assumed I'd be stabbing and shooting arrows with stealth. And you get that from your class skills. But I was surprised to find out you can be a tank and you can be a healer, Nightblade. There's builds out there. If you take a healing staff and start leveling skills in the healing tree, you become a sneaky healer boy. And that's super hard to get used to for me. One thing that someone showed me that's super helpful, especially as a newbie to get over this, is there's a build system in the game now. So this isn't a mod or an add-on, this is in the game, the base game. You select the type of build you want. So like I said, I played a Nightblade. And it says, do you want to use magic, stamina, bows, two-handed weapons, heavy armor? What do you want to do? And then it tells you exactly what it recommends you spend your skill points on. And this was amazing because it let me understand the system. It told me to use medium armor, get passes from that tree. It told me to join the Fighters Guild and pick up some of their abilities. And then I just followed that like blindly. And by the time I hit 50, I fully understood the system. I'd leveled up most of the essential parts of the skill trees and I respect into a build that I wanted to play as. So my advice for a newcomer put off by the class system is, most things are totally viable. Choose a class you like the look of and make a character. Play how you want to play. You want to play as a guy with a staff, pick a guy. Maybe the sorcerer, maybe the warden, maybe something else. Pick a guy you like the look of in a, in a, in a faction you like the look of and just make that character and pick up a staff and just play. And go down the path it tells you can use that staff, that's it. And by the time you hit endgame, you'll find synergies and skills that fit your class and style of play. And there's tons of guides out there to help you. But really, you can get over this. It's not a big problem. And I've come to love it. Next, the thing you're going to be doing most in ESO as a new player is leveling. Many years ago, when I first started playing ESO, you had zones you worked through, funneling you through different areas. Coming back in 2021, that's not the case. The game is now totally open. You can go to whatever area you want. Uh, you can go to a level 50 zone at level 1 and it will all scale to your level. Or vice versa, you can be near end game and go level in a star zone. Well, you know, a, a low level area. And this has got a huge benefit, but a huge problem for me, as someone who was new and found ESO really confusing. The plus side is, you level where you want. I love Skyrim, Oblivion, certain zones in the game I found really interesting. And I love the guilds, I love the side quest from Skyrim, you know, the Thieves Guild, 
um, the Dark Brotherhood, that kind of thing. And I spent most of my time leveling, doing these quests, doing these zones, mixed in, I joined the guilds, taking out NPCs at the Dark Brotherhood. And honestly, I hit 50 so fast because I loved every minute of the leveling. However, there is a massive flaw here for me. When you first start ESO, you start in the current content. So I think I started in like Somerset or something. That's the most recent expansion, I think. Again, I'm new, I don't know. But before you would have started in your faction starting zone and picked up that quest chain, think making a character in Shadowlands, in, in WoW when you start in Shadowlands rather than, you know, in Elwyn Forest as Alliance. And this caused me and some of my friends over the last few years to bail on this game because I just didn't understand what I was doing. You, you just, you're in the middle of a story and you don't know where your place in the world is. The game's been out for seven years. I didn't even realize it had a main story until, until I started playing last month. So my advice is if you want structure, start with your starting faction zone. That'll progress you through like four zones and most of the, uh, most of the first 50 levels. By the time you get through all this, you'll have a much better understanding of how the world works, the questing system, fast traveling. I highly recommend checking out Bro We Got This on YouTube. He's got guides and I watched a ton of his videos as a new player, really helped explain things. And he does like a, uh, a zone guide of, of where you should start and how to understand how to progress in the game, really helpful. Another thing I enjoyed about the new leveling, which has helped me stay engaged, is these zone guides. Every zone in ESO now has a progress bar, basically. How many soul shards you've got, how many zone quests, bosses, dungeons, and delves you've completed in that area. And as a completionist, I've really enjoyed progressing and ticking these off and being able to say, yep, I fully finished this zone now, on to the next one. It's a small thing, but it, it's kept me staying up late at night because I just want to finish that zone. And a good segue from uh, leveling is questing. I really want to shed some light on the questing because, wow, it has blown my mind. I honestly have been shocked by the quests in this game. There's zone quests, side quests, main quests, expansion quests, <clears throat> sorry, guild quests, and they're all voice acted, and the stories are incredible. If you think of a game like WoW, where 90% of the content is fetch quests or kill quests, or something like BDO, where the majority of the game is grinding mobs, it's like 10% in ESO. The quests have got you delving into underground mines, caverns, solving mysteries and puzzles, and long, really interesting quest chains that give you a really good story. And then when you finish it, you get an achievement saying you've helped this person or you've saved the king or you've, you've done this big, massive story chain. It, it's not Skyrim, but it's damn close. I have been blown away by the story quests. Um, not sorry, the main story, but all the different stories in the zones, in the guilds, I cannot recommend the quests in this game alone uh, enough. If you just want a single player game, hell, jump in and do some of these quests. They're really, really good. Next, controversial one here, guys, combat. It's not tab targeting like people are used to, and it doesn't feel as good as the action combat in games like BDO. The biggest flaws I have with the combat is it doesn't feel impactful. Your character just feels like he's flailing his weapon around and the enemies just don't react. As a melee character, I really struggle with this, even in first person. In fact, first person is probably worse. A few things that have helped me enjoy the combat is being able to dive into the enemy, stunning him, putting him off balance um, and avoiding all the, all the big zones on the floor, things like that. They make you feel like you're doing more. Another thing that's helped is turning on the damage numbers. This actually, you can see when you're dealing damage, you can see when you get a crit. It baffles me that this isn't on automatically. And if you're playing, try turning it on, see what it's like. It changed the game for me. After about 80 hours of ESO, I still don't love the combat. I think it looks better when you're using like a bow or something ranged. But when you're up front, it, even when you're blocking and stuff like that, it just doesn't feel like you're doing it. But I'm at the end game now, and if I stand in the fire, I die. <laughs> I have to min-max my rotation, and it's starting to feel like a good MMO combat. I can't convince myself, and I can't convince you to enjoy the combat. But if you do enjoy it, or you can get past it, there's so much to love here. I personally haven't tried tanking or healing, so I can't comment on this. But I can say there's enough skills and enough different rotations to try. You'll find something you enjoy. There's a lot I didn't like about certain certain like cookie cutter builds that I'd found online. I couldn't get used to them and I didn't like how they played. So I found something that I enjoyed and it was a, it was a sneaky, stealthy build that felt like I was doing things. It felt like I was stunning the enemy. I felt like I was getting around. And yeah, I, I found a build I enjoyed playing. If I was playing a tank build, maybe I wouldn't enjoy it. So I can't, I can't recommend everything. I can say PVP is so much better than PBE. Whereas the enemies do nothing, 
oh, they don't seem to react in PvP. It's so good. You you know, you can stun enemies, you can get behind them, you can off heal, you can work with teams to get combos going. And some of the PvP is incredible. You've got this big open world PvP called Cyrodiil, which is phenomenal. I, I can't talk about it. The video will be too long if I talk about everything in the game. But yeah, there is certain parts where the combat shines and certain parts where the combat's amazing. But generally, on paper, just starting a level one character, combat's not great. I'm not gonna lie. The big one, why we all play MMOs. Endgame. I am not the authority on Endgame. I am not the person to be telling you about Endgame. I am still an amateur in the world of ESO. But from my experience, there's tons of dailies, there's dungeons, there's raids called trials basically. And there's about seven years of content to go through. The best bit, it's all still relevant. Really shocked me this. In most MMOs, you only play through the most recent expansion. I've played through most of Shadowlands, you know, I've done all the dungeons, I've done the raid, I've done everything in the new WoW expansion, PvP, everything like that. And I'm done, I'm bored. I've, I've played, you know, the mythic dungeons again and again and again, and I'm bored, I don't wanna play them anymore. In ESO, you can do all the dungeons at 50, scaled to 50. You can do all of the old zones, uh, expansions to earn cosmetics, to earn skill points, level up your champion points. I'm going through areas that I never got to play when leveling, um, and I'm having a great time. And it's, it's as if, there's no barrier there. I could just go do whatever I want in this huge world. There is no shortage of, of world content to do and end game content. I can't speak for how deep this gets, like Mythic Plus 10, Mythic Plus 50. I don't think that's in the game. I haven't seen it and I haven't got there. I'm not, I, I can't tell you about that. But I can tell you, content to do, there's tons. There's also PvP. I've told you about uh, Cyrodiil, this huge open world PvP. Uh, enemy factions, you fight them and gain control of these Elder Scrolls. And it's 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 as good as PvP as I've played before. Really is, really recommend trying that at least once. Next, the reason most of us play MMOs. Endgame. I'm not the best person to speak on Endgame. I'm still an amateur in the world of ESO. I am just coming to the end of my one month. I have got, I've got to the Endgame. I've done the Endgame dungeons, the veteran dungeons, the uh, you know, the spicy stuff at the end of the game. I've leveled up my champion points to the to the cap where you can you can start earning your cool armors. And I, I feel like I've I've seen I've seen everything. I've I've dipped my toe in the water of endgame. And I'm having fun. But I haven't done everything. I can't tell you what the equivalent of Mythic Plus 10 dungeons are in this because I haven't seen them yet. However, one thing that, that I'm really enjoying here is there is like seven years of content to do and everything's still relevant in most MMOs. So I played Shadowlands when it came out, sweated it nonstop for like three months. <laughs> um, I've done everything. I've done the, the raid, the dungeons, Mythic Plus, and the story, and I'm bored. I don't want to go back in the same raid. I don't want to go back in the same dungeon again. Whereas here, everything's scaled to 50. You can go and do all the dungeons and collect the cool gear sets, which are scaled to your level and your champion point cap. There's tons of old zones and expansions where you can earn cosmetics, skill points, and level your champion points. I'm doing some of the old expansions now, which came out, to, go, um, to get some of the cool stuff from there. And it's all hard, it's all difficult, it's all fun. And it's, it, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm leveling in a low tier zone. I'm just playing the game at end game. And I'm progressing my character alongside that. There's also PvP. I talked about Cyrodiil, where you fight enemy factions, you gain control of the Elder Scrolls, and it's, it's as good as, it, it, it's as good of PvP as I've ever played. Um, if you think of like, I keep mentioning WoW because it's my main game, so sorry if you've not played it. But if you think of Wintergrass when that came out, that blew people away. And WoW never innovated on that. You know, I think open world PvP in WoW is dead now. This brings it back to life. Um, I love it, I think it's incredible. And I really do, I really do love it. Other than all that, there's loads of content. There's been like three events in the last month that I've played, which give you cool stuff to do. Like kind of like seasonal events with stuff to do. Um, there's really, really in-depth crafting. You could literally make a character who researches new patterns and crafts and does crafting dailies. And it's a huge system. You can you can craft so many things. There's nothing, there's nothing special in that they don't do anything unusual other than like the research side. But the crafting is good. Everything you would expect is here. There's the guild systems, which you can you can keep doing. You can level up your horse riding, stuff like that. You can buy houses to store your cool trophies and items in and chill after a hard day's adventuring. Endgame is not 
just broad gear grind. That's what I'm trying to say here. There is a huge open world that you can explore and do. That's not for everyone, but I'm, I didn't think it was for me, but I'm loving it so far. Next up, this is a controversial one, pricing of the game. And this is gonna put a lot of people off. Firstly, the game uses every single pricing model known to online MMOs. And they're shameless about it, they really are. You buy the game and there's a subscription model which gives you access to content, storage bags, uh, and general all-round bonuses. Uh, but then they sell you expansions, they sell you cosmetics, they sell you quality of life items in the cash shop, and they sell loot boxes. It's all there. All the, all the things you don't want to see are there. But let's be real, let's talk through it. Let's say how much of that is a problem. You've got to buy the game, that's required. You, you, know, you, need the, you need the base game. Now you've got a choice. You can, get, you can buy the DLC or the expansions you want. Maybe you don't want to play through Morrowind because you don't like the area, or maybe you only want to play through Morrowind. You can buy that outright. Or you can just get a subscription for like $15, I think it is, and this will give you access to every single DLC, expansion, or content that's ever been released in the last seven years. I haven't bought the most recent expansion yet because I'm still lost in this world. I've still got so much I want to play through. I've got I've written down the areas that I want to go to next and finish. And there's so much I still need to do that I haven't hit the point where I want to buy the newest expansion. So that's not an immediate requirement at all. If you just buy the base game, it's like $15, so like £12, I think. And I've checked, it's free this weekend actually. And it's on sale right now for $6 which, yeah, bizarre. And then you subscribe for $15. You are getting a ton of content for less than $25 or 20, uh, for less than $30 or 25 pounds. It, that, that's what I've done. I've bought the game and bought one month sub. If after those 30 months, you've played through everything and you want to quit, fine. I've played about 80 hours this month. If I cancel my sub now, it has been worth every penny. I don't get that out of, uh, you know, a, a game you'd buy off the shelf for that price. So, yeah, uh, it, uh, it's annoying, but it is what it is. I, I, I don't think it's as bad as it looks on paper. One thing that makes it a lot better is if you buy a subscription, you get, I think it's 1,650 crowns free per month with your subscription. So. I mentioned all this cool stuff in the shop, so you can buy things that make your horse faster. You can get that in the game, but there is a time limit on it. Uh, you can buy other perks from the shop that improve your character. It's not pay to win, but it is pay for convenience, and it's very convenient. You can buy that with crown points. Uh, you can also buy loot boxes for your crown points. So I didn't know what to do. I bought a few loot boxes, and I've upgraded my horse a little bit. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. And next month, if I have another, you know, when my subscription rolls over, I'll probably upgrade my horse again and maybe buy another couple of loot boxes because I don't know what else to buy. Maybe I'll buy a cosmetic outfit, I don't know. So if you've been playing this game for, you know, if you've, if you've got six months on the game, you're gonna have so many crown points that you'll buy all the cosmetics you want. So don't think of the shop as an extra thing, in my, in my opinion. I've not hit a point where I need to buy anything yet. So don't let it put you off too much. You do need a bit of upfront money, but it's, it's not a game breaker. So let's wrap things up. Um, this video has gone on for much longer than I was expecting. Uh, there is a lot more I'd love to talk about, but yeah, I'm going to have to wrap up here because it's getting a bit long. In summary, should you play Elder Scrolls Online in 2021? If you're looking for an amazing story that you can sink tons of hours of time into and it has a shitload of content to do both solo and with friends, and you're willing to pay for the game and sub up front for all the convenience, put the time in to understand the game, the systems, and how everything works, you will be rewarded. It is phenomenal. This game is incredible. I've had a ton of fun and I'm still progressing, meeting cool people, getting end game gear. I've been streaming it on and off since early March. People have been enjoying it, you know, they keep coming back. Um, I'm loving it. And it's been so much fun. I've, I've got now a few people that have been, that watch the stream have started playing as well. And we've got a good group going on. Um, Eat on the EU. If you play on EU, come join, come join us. If you don't play on the EU, feel free to come watch Medieval Marty on Twitch. And a big one, if you played a while ago and couldn't get into it, come give it a try now. Put the time back into learning it, getting 
get, get your head around the basic systems, learn where you should be questing, pick a class you enjoy, and just play up to a point where you get over that knowledge gap. If I had to summarize the problems I've had with the game and how I got over them, maybe that could help. So first was the class system. Uh, you just pick the, the class advisor, like I was saying, and go with that until you understand the game. Next up is the zones and struggling to understand how to get around and the world. I'm gonna link a video in the comments from Bra I Got This who explains the how, kind of where you should start and how to progress through, which has helped me a ton. Um, next up, the combat. If you don't like the combat, you really can't get past it. This just isn't for you. If it, it doesn't get any better. If the combat is a, is, is a, is a fundamental issue, I, you can't change that in the game. You really can't. And finally, monetization. Again, if you cannot get over the monetization or you just want a free to play game, again, this isn't for you. You can play without a sub or buying any expansions, but you're locking yourself out of, in my opinion, some of the best content in the game. They're, they're the big issues for me. Some can be avoided and, and changed, and some are gonna stop you playing the game. But if you can get past the flaws and any problems you have with the game, this is a phenomenal game. I said at the start of this video, I've tried to play this like four times before, and I've given up every time. I wish I'd put more effort in back then and kept playing because it is incredible. I remember watching Nixium's video a few years ago about how he left WoW for ESO and I really didn't understand it, but now I completely get it. Other than that guys, this has been a much longer video than I expected. TLDR, yes, it's worth playing in 2021. I stream a lot of this on Twitch again at Medieval Marty. Link will be in the comments if you wanna come watch live. Let me know in the comments if you like videos on MMORPGs or not, as I'd be happy to make more either on ESO specifically or just on other MMOs that I can start playing. Other than that, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.